Logic. I plan to make this the last installment in my brief introduction to using logic as a way of looking at language. If you haven't gone through the previous videos 1 through 4, please take time to do so. Go ahead, I'll wait for you. Before getting into the new topics, I want to offer a brief note on translating into logic. I realized that I never took the time to break translations into a step-by-step -step process. Now it's a good time to slow the pace down a bit and work through how to parse ordinary language in logical language, then translate that logical language into symbolic logic. First, make sure you understand the logic of the sentence you're analyzing. If your sentence is, English is a tough language, break it down. You're actually saying that English is tough and that English is a language. Similarly, a good person is somebody who's both good and a person. Then break the translation into stages. First, reword the sentence in logical language. English is a tough language becomes English is tough and English is a language. Once you've structured it clearly, start putting the sentence into logic. Figure out how many variables you have and where to use them. For all x, if x is English, then x is tough and x is a language is a good example. As you go through this process, look for buzzwords. You've learned logical operators for if, then, if and only if, and, or, and so on. Figure out where those go. Also pick out universal and existential terms. Always and any time mean for all times. Somewhere is for some place, and so on. So the logic of everybody's talking to everybody else is more transparent once it's reworded. All persons are talking to all other persons. It's just a step from there to for all x, for all y, if x is a person and y is a person, then x is talking to y. Now I fully realize that just throwing three or four heuristics out your way isn't going to help you translate in detail into logic. So I'm going to offer a few links in the info bar below that should provide you with further exercises and more information on this topic. On to the new stuff. I mentioned the domain of discourse when talking about variables. I said that it was the set of all things a variable could represent. That brings up two concepts we haven't covered yet, a set and members of a set. In logic, a set is just a grouping of things that belong together. There's a set of colors of paint, a set of ingredients in ice cream, a set of people whose company you enjoy. Those things within that set are its members. Members of the set of ingredients in ice cream include eggs, cream, and sugar. If something A is an element of set A, it's, re it's represented this way. So eggs are an element of the set ice cream ingredients. We can also say that some B is not an element of set A. For example, mutton is not an element of the set of ice cream ingredients. But consider that some members of ice cream ingredients are also members of the set of dairy products. So the two sets intersect each other. Ice cream ingredients intersects dairy products. That's the intersection of the two sets. You can also speak of the union of the two sets. This is the same concept underpinning logical or. The union of ice cream ingredients and dairy products includes every member of both sets. Let's get a little more detailed here. There aren't simply sets. Sets may have subsets. So ice cream ingredients are a subset of foods. But what we really mean by this is that ice cream ingredients and foods are two different sets. So it's even more precise to call ice cream ingredients a proper subset of the set of foods. Of course, two sets can also coincide. The set of ice cream ingredients may be exactly the same as the set of ingredients for something I've never heard of before, in which case every member of one would be a member of the other. Switching gears here to probability. I'm not going to look at solving problems in probability. This is just about the, the logic, the language of probability. Alright, keep the concepts you just learned about for sets in mind here. The probability of a single event A is represented as the probability of A. A separate event B has a probability B. Now think back to our sets. Taking both the probability of A or the probability of B, and that's a logical or there, you'll have the probability of the union of A and B. And you can bring back the concept of intersection too. Here it's the probability of both A and B being true. Now if you think that the probability of event A depends on event B, you'll talk about the probability of A on B. Likewise, if the probability of B depends on A, then that's the probability of B on A. 
as I've mentioned, this is all well and good for the, the language of probability, but if you want to calculate probabilities, you'll need more information than the symbols I've just given you. Well, those are all the topics I have to cover in this quick run through the basics of using logic as a way for understanding language. Of course, logic covers so many subjects and has so many uses that I haven't even touched on in these videos. It's heavily influenced uh, many fields within mathematics, philosophy, computer science, and more. But crucial to those studies is logical validity. Instead, the heart of this course has been the use of logic to understand sentences and language. I hope that this short introduction to formal logic will help you take a structured look at language and provide you with a good jumping off point for learning more. As always, I appreciate your time, and thank you for learning with me. <laughs>